Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Tequila Talks. Tonight is our first Tequila Talks with a special guest. And the special guest just happens to be my lovely girlfriend, Miss Lauren Burrell. Hello. So yeah, so Lauren and I have been together for what now? A little bit over a year, a year and a few months. And my intention of bringing her on the channel was to showcase her experience with tequila drinking. And I think it ties in excellent with tonight's episode where we'll showcase all sorts of celebrity tequilas. So for a novice drinker, it's something that's been pretty appealing. Mm -hmm. So what would you say that you like about the tequilas that we have in front of us tonight? And go ahead and pick something out so that we can pour it out and enjoy it as we have our tequila talks. Yeah, well, with 818, I really like um, the vanilla taste okay. to it, uh, the additives. Additives, um, we'll, touch, yeah. we'll touch base on the abocantes or the additives. Yeah, and then um, with more like Añejo tequilas, I like the caramels and the smoothness of them. Okay, perfect. So you want to go ahead and pour out some 818? I'll yeah. go ahead and pour it out, but as we enjoy the evening, we'll drink some 818 tequila. Reposado. So yes, uh, Lauren and I started dating and um, I think from the very beginning, you were not much of a tequila drinker. No, not at all. But what was your favorite like drink choice? Vodka, definitely. You were, you were a vodka drinker. Yeah. And yes, um, I've never been a vodka drinker, so I can't imagine what that would feel like <laughs> or taste like. So yeah, Lauren uh, enjoyed vodka. And you know, as we started dating, I started showing her all sorts of tequilas. And little by little, she became more and more experienced with the tequila drinking experience. So here you go. Salud. You had the experience to join in on one of our tequila dinners. Here at my restaurant, we do curated dinners where we do tequila pairings, a four course menu. And tell us a little bit about that experience. It was really fun. I liked learning about how to properly drink tequila. Okay. And the food was great with every one of them. So yeah, it was, Perfect. It was a great experience. I took my family with me. Yes, your grandma, your mm -hmm. sister came out, yeah. had a great time. So yeah, uh, in our tequila dinners, we do somewhat of a master class where I talk about what is tequila, how it's made. And in Tequila Talks, really, the core and, and the foundation of Tequila Talks is what I discuss at these tequila dinners. And then I dive into on how to actually properly drink tequila, mm -hmm. which we did skip a step, but I think we're just a little bit thirsty and uh, we're trying to warm up. It's the evening's kind of cooling off, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, we go through step by step on how to drink, how to enjoy tequila properly. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start talking about the tequilas that we have in front of us. Tonight's intention was to showcase more of a celebrity tequila and how that appeals to novice drinkers and discuss a little bit about your experience and uh, we'll both chime in onto uh, all the different tasting notes and all the different experiences that we feel and what we notice as we drink Casamigos, Lobos, and 818. Now, the experience is very different from drinker to drinker and that's why with all the different tequila reviews and all the different opinions that are out there, we just wanna be open-minded and have fun. And, and I think that's what celebrity tequilas bring to the table for purist drinkers and like myself and like a lot of the snobs that are posting their, um, their reviews. I think there's a lot of closed-mindedness, but definitely the, the agave forward, the traditional ancestral approach is what's at the core of my preferred experience, but I'm also very open-minded to the celebrity tequila experience. So we're gonna start out with um, Casamigos. And the story about Casamigos, if you're familiar with uh, George Clooney, he's the owner of the Casamigos. Well, now he sold Casamigos to uh, Diageo, which is a big um, spirits distributor. So Casamigos, George Clooney started this tequila brand with the intention of Casamigos only being for his a house and for his friends, so Casa Amigos. And he never had the idea of producing this tequila for, um, for ex uh, exporting the tequila or producing it for you know the consumers. So the lore behind Casa Amigos is that his tequila after many different uh, blind tastings and their curation of this tequila brand, George Clooney found out that Casa Amigos was such an exceptional tequila that he had to share the tequila experience with 
uh, all of not only his friends, but the whole world. And um, Casamigos now is a household name, house yeah. of friends. So it's uh, pretty cool. And what do you think about Casamigos? I think that's uh, tequila I, that you heavily enjoy. Yeah, I love Casamigos. It's very much the trend now. Everyone's drinking Casamigos. Um, but I didn't even know it was George Clooney's brand at all mm. until you yeah, told me. So yeah, so George Clooney sold this tequila for over a billion dollars wow. back in 2017. And that's really where the, the wheels started uh, rolling with all this celebrity tequila. Obviously, you know, there's money involved and mm -hmm. with, you know, images and, and brands like LeBron, like Kendall Jenner, like mm -hmm. Michael Jordan, George Clooney. Now The Rock has a tequila. Oh, really? So these people are, you know, leveraging their image to be able to produce or bottle their own tequila and create their own brand. And that's something that um, Kendall Jenner, and we'll touch a little bit about that in terms of sustainability and, and how that affect, uh, affects the supply chain. Oh, okay. So with Casa Amigos, we have the Añejo tequila in front of us. We're gonna go ahead and crack it open. And this comes from NOM uh, 1609. Every tequila bottle is gonna have a NOM number, an identification number, which is gonna give you um, insight about the distillery, about the processes that they're using, and which is something that's very peculiar and very, uh, it's, it's an important thing to note that when you look into these uh, noms and into the distilleries, you find that certain distilleries are producing five, 10, 15, 20 different types of tequila. And that's really more of like a private label execution. And that's what a lot of these celebrity brands are doing is a private label tequila where they're, you know, telling a story of, oh, you know, we do these blind tastings and we curate and we find, which, you know, might very well be the case. Yeah. Um, but these private labels it can be a turnoff to those traditionalist drinkers. So, Casa Amigos Añejo in front of us, go ahead and tell us a little bit about it. What do you, what do you notice and kind of what you learned about the uh, tequila drinking process? Okay, so, you can start with the body. Okay, we're gonna look at the body. The legs are fairly slow, dripping down. Okay, they're clinging to the glass pretty elegantly. Mm -hmm. And like uh, like wine, we were drinking some wine last night. Yeah, I noticed like the legs are kind of like drops. It kind of looks like syrup a little bit. Okay, a little bit uh, more defined. Yeah. More droplets of tequila clinging to that glass. Now, the, that clinging is a, an indication of the tannic properties in the spirit, but also the quality of the distillate. So as those legs cling to the glass, uh, the less uh, sugar and the better distilled the alcohol is. So it's always indicative, it's always important to take a look at those legs in the tequila. Yeah. So next is? The smell. The smell, the nosing of our tequila. Go ahead and tell me what you think. I kind of smell like lime. You, you smell lime, a hint of citrus. But it has like a strong, like oak kind of smell. A heavy oak, so heavy this smell. is, yeah, yeah, definitely for me the oaking. Um, the heavy oaking, Ameri like um, an American whiskey oak, yeah. has those spice notes. Yes. I do pick up a little bit of the citrus. And for me, like I smell like, al like a strong presence of the alcohol vapors. Yeah. So it's not as like buttery or not as mm -hmm. smooth smelling, but we'll see what the taste is like. Let's go, Let's go ahead and take a sip, salud. <laughs> I do notice that alcohol. Pepper. I taste pepper. Do a little bit of pepper. But I notice that alcohol, that like astringency right off the bat, the oaks are starting to sell, settle in and that like tannic feel, the velvetiness of like a dry red wine mm -hmm. from the barrel aging yeah. really starts to coat the palate. I get a little bit of chocolate. When I first started drinking Casamigos, is that it was actually, um, I was in New York City on 57th and 5th Avenue. My sister and uh, her husband and I went on a vacation. Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah, like 2018. So right around the time where tequilas and the celebrity tequilas were beginning to take off. And uh, I had Casa Amigos Añejo at the um, Kimpton Hotel in, in uh, New York City. 
sitting on a rooftop bar. I think we were like 50 some floors up and I felt really, really uh, fancy drinking this uh, quality aged tequila. At that point, I thought it was a quality, quality aged tequila. Okay. But again, we, we talk about the abocantes or the additives. I think mm -hmm. you mentioned this a little bit earlier. And in terms of the color, we do notice such a rich mahogany color. Yeah. And in previous videos, uh, I've showcased the Siete Leguas where their Añejo almost has like a straw-like golden color. Now, mm -hmm. Siete Leguas is additive free. Casamigos is not confirmed additive free. So when we talk about the abocantes or the mellowing agents, legally, tequila distilleries are allowed to use the abocantes within a percent of volume. So 1% of the distillate volume has to be has to be less than one percent for these abocantes that are present in those tequila batches. So, they're coloring agents, mellowing agents, vanillas, mm -hmm. oaking components that really help. Um, from what I've understood is that the abocantes are used to kind of um, create more consistency in the tequila. And when these tequilas are being mass produced, which is something that now the celebrity tequila craze has caused on the supply chain, this mass production of tequila is causing some of these steps to be short. Some of the agave is not maturing long enough in the fields or some of the cooking methods to be expedited, to be able to produce more. So the abocante is, I think that's why so many people are against the abocante because it does cut some of those corners. But at the end of the day, um, the celebrity tequilas have brought a lot of um, awareness to tequila and the culture and the drinking of it. And it's become a worldwide phenomenon now where like now everyone drinks tequila. People come out to my bar, I have to buy the Casamigos by the cases <laughs> or else we run out. So let's go ahead and get another drink and then we'll move on to our next tequila. It starts to mellow out a little bit more. A little bit more smooth now. Mm -hmm. But I do notice those pepper notes. Anything else in particular that you notice? No, pepper is the strong, strong note. Pepper is the strongest note mm -hmm. for you. And one thing I really like about the Casamigos bottle is that it showcases this like very rustic, like um, design to the bottle, mm -hmm. very minimalist. And I think that's what gives that appeal for someone that's like not used to drinking tequila or doesn't know much about tequila they think like this is a traditional tequila mm -hmm. this is something that's high quality yeah but uh you know being a celebrity tequila i it wouldn't be my first choice but i have to give casamigos a a very good uh i have to give it a good rating yeah. i would say like a b plus it's a good quality yeah. añejo 